Hey there, welcome aboard. I'm going to talk about something that a lot of traders don't talk about. Uh, I don't know why in, in the currency trading world we don't look more into this sort of thing. I have some theories, but uh, they're not very flattering, so I won't share them. <laughs> but what I will share with you is that um, I have, you know, there's a few times now where I've been sort of enamored with a band, right? And I'm like, wow, this band is awesome. And, you know, I'll go and watch them and these small shows and stuff like that. And then the bands get really big and they get really popular. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Like to see these bands go from these little small venues to the big ones. And, and I always wonder, like, what is that? Like, why is it that, you know, it takes time or it takes momentum for, for something to take hold? Um, like the popularity of a band, for example. And I think that this statistic that is actually quite well known in certain pockets of trading, but not so much in the currency world, and I'm not sure why. Um, like I said, I have some theories. Uh, by the way, if you want to join the, the course, there is the course at nakedtradingclass.com. It's free, and you can check that out. There's a link below or above this video. It'll show you a couple of different ways uh, when you go through that. You get a cheat sheet. You can download it. It'll also show you how to build an account quickly, three different ways. Anyway, so let's talk about this stat because a lot of traders don't know about this stat or they don't use it, all right? And I'll tell you why I think you might or might not want to use it. It's called SQN and it's from Van Tharp. Let me actually share my screen. That would be good. So you can see what's going on here. Boom. Boom, bam, and blammo. Okay, so it's called SQN. Now, if you've done your your uh, your test your uh, stats as a as a good university student, then you know what the t test is, right? It's a test of means to see if they're different or they come from different distributions, different populations, and that's what this is. So what Van Tharp did is he just took the t test and he applied it to trading. So here's the formula. It's exactly the same as a t test. It's the square root of the number of trades multiplied by the average return, right? And then the uh, standard deviation of your returns. So that, that's basically it. And then it pumps out the number over here. Now you will recall that depending on the number of in your sample, the critical value of your t-test changes. Now this is, I don't wanna get in the weeds here, but basically the, the, the bigger the number, the better. So usually this number is really important. Like if it can get over two, then you're pretty sweet. Usually you want it to be over two. It depends on, the, again, the number of, of, of observations you have, in this case, the number of trades. Now here's, here are the, here's the thing though about the SQN number. See, Van Tharp will tell you that it like if hey you got a high SQN you're sweet you got a low SQN your system's not so good maybe not, not trade it or maybe maybe tweak it a bit um, and that's generally that's true however there are some special cases where I think he's wrong and here's why number one is that the SQN uh, first of all if you have more than a hundred trades you you don't want to you don't want to run your SQN you want to just run your SQN up to hundred trades and the reason why is because his scale gets all off. He's basically he basically ranks his trades based on essentially a hundred a hundred trades. He, that's how he'll rank his systems. Uh, but if and if you have uh, more than a hundred trades, just randomly pull a hundred trades out or something like that. Use the first hundred, whatever you want, but don't don't use like seven hundred trades if you've back tested and forex tested and you have seven hundred trades. You don't want to do that. That's what you want to avoid, right? Now, so here's where it goes wrong and here's where it's tricky. And by the way, um, if you enjoy this stuff, you're going to really love the Naked Trading class you can get at nakedtradingclass.com. Go there and download the cheat sheet and go through the class. You don't have to you know, register anything. Just go and watch it straight away. Now, here's, here's why I think he's wrong. He says that when you have lots of trades that don't vary very much, in other words, you don't have huge winners and small winners like you know, $100 winners and $15,000 winners and stuff like that. He says, if you don't have that, you're, you've got a better system. And that's why standard deviation comes into play in this formula. Um, that's what the T-test says. T-test says, look, there's not a whole lot of variability going on here. That's a good thing. We have a pretty good idea 
of what we're looking at here, essentially. And what happens when you use a trailing exit? Well, when you use a trailing exit, your variability is going to go off the hook, right? It's going to be everywhere. You will totally have trades completely all over the map if you have some sort of trailing exit. Some of them are going to be small winners, small losers. Some of them are going to be big winners, big losers. Uh, well, not if you're using a stop loss, it shouldn't be really big. But but the, the issue with this is that you're penalizing yourself for using a trailing exit. I don't think that should be the case. I think that trailing ex exits are, can be very useful. In fact, we're using trailing exits in our class that we're running right now and building a small account quickly. Uh, and you can learn about that at nakedtradingclass.com if you want to get more information on that and go through the, the, the three ways to build up an account yourself in that class. So I don't think that we should penalize a strategy if you're using trailing exit. I understand why he does. Um, the good news is if you use the T-test or as he calls it, the SQN to rank your systems, you're gonna know pretty quickly which ones are good and which ones aren't. That, that's true. But if you're using a trailing exit, it will penalize your system. So your, your ranking or your rating of the system will come down a bit if you're using a trailing exit. So the best, really, the best system in his, in, in the if you look at it through the stat, through the eyes of the stat, is a system that has consistent winners and obviously makes more money than it loses, essentially. If there's very little variability, so if you had like a target, if you go for five to one, you're risking $1,000 to make $5,000 on every single trade, right? If that's what you're doing and it makes money and it has a positive expectancy, it will have a very good SQN number. So there you have it. So I just wanted to share this with you. It's definitely not something that is for everyone. But if you're at that stage where you're trying to figure out what should I be looking at here, what which systems should I be using, which ones should I throw away, it can be very valuable. Just know that you will penalize yourself if you're using a trailing exit. And that's something that I think is, in my opinion, wrong because I think trailing exits are good for many reasons. You can let them go while you're asleep, right? You could have them automated and, and have them take profit while you sleep. It also takes the pressure off. You don't have to make any decisions. When you're using a trailing exit, it's like, well, no, nope, trailing exit's going to do it for me. I'm not going to beat myself up over what's what I'm what if I did the right thing or the wrong thing and taking profit here. Just let it go. So it makes a whole lot of sense, I think. So I hope this helps. I wish you happy trading. We'll see you in another video. Bye.